In the morning of March 20th, a video revealed significant water accumulation inside the Guangdong Shantou Bay Tunnel. Local residents reported that around 10.30 a.m. when driving through the tunnel, the water on the road was about half the depth of a car wheel, forcing vehicles to navigate through cautiously. It wasn't until approximately 3 p.m. that day that the tunnel returned to normal. According to public records, the Guangdong Shantou Bay Tunnel, held as a world-class challenging project, had a total investment of about 5.7 billion Chinese yen, approximately $800 million, stretching over six and a half kilometers. It connects the north and south shores of the Shantou Inner Bay, taking over seven years to complete construction and officially opening to traffic on September 28, 2022. The construction of the tunnel was undertaken by the Municipal Engineering Company of China Railway Tunnel Bureau. The Shantou Bay Tunnel, in just a year and a half, has become a hot topic thanks to some unexpected waterworks. According to the powers that be, a firefighting pipeline mishap around the 2,400-meter mark on the tunnel's western side is to blame, gushing clean water in from the sidewall. But of course, there are still skeptics in the crowd, questioning how such a new tunnel could spring a leak so soon and pondering the quality of the construction materials. The recent water leak at the Shanto Tunnel is not the first incident to occur among Chinese tunnel projects. Back on July 15, 2021, another disturbing event occurred at the Shijingshan Tunnel construction site, part of the Xinye Expressway in Zhuhai. At the time, it served as a vital link for swift transportation between the northern and southern regions of Zhuhai's primary urban area, connecting with the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge facilitating seamless travel across the three regions. According to the Associated Press, strange noises were heard just before debris began falling and water flooded in. Despite evacuation efforts and rescue operations, 14 people were still trapped and have lost their lives. Since then, the attention and criticism has been directed at China Second Railway Group, the construction unit responsible for the construction of the Shijingshan Tunnel. The incident has caused significant disappointment from the people who are expressing disappointment in national projects. There is even criticism being directed at the government, accusing it of turning a blind eye to projects that are of poor quality and potentially endanger people's lives. Unfortunately, substandard construction projects appear to be a widespread problem in China. The water leak incident in the Dalian Bay Undersea Tunnel in Liaoning on May 16, 2023 raised widespread concerns and raised eyebrows among netizens. Footage of a significant water buildup flooding the tunnel and vehicles hastily turning around quickly went viral, drawing attention to the issue. The local transport authority clarified that the tunnel itself remains structurally sound, with the leak originating from a fire safety facility along the side road, which is currently being repaired. The Dalian Bay Undersea Tunnel, hailed as a foundational project in the reconstruction and development of national transportation in northeast China, connects Dongshan District with Ganjingzi District in Dalian City. Despite its importance, the irony of facing a leak problem just weeks after its inauguration led to derisive comments from netizens, leading to greater concerns about the quality of the infrastructure and project supervision in China. Similar incidents also occurred in Hainan Province on August 29, 2021. At that time, heavy rainfall was recorded throughout the province, causing flooding near a tunnel in Zhengzhou. The local traffic authority attributed the outflow to rainfall and drainage from the Jingguang railway line located above the tunnel. In addition, the rain also collapsed several roads near residential areas in Xinhan. Statistics have shown that buildings in China have an average lifespan of only 30 years, due to short-sighted planning, design errors, and technical quality problems. And when it comes to price, China's current housing construction costs for a total of 18 billion square meters with an average unit price of 2,500 yuan per square meter. The total property value is a staggering 45 trillion yuan, about $6 trillion. Extending the average lifespan of these structures by 20 years can save a huge investment in maintenance of 18 trillion yuan which is about $2.5 trillion. Critics are quick to point out that cutting corners during the construction process is the main culprit behind these alarming trends. The construction landscape in China paints a concerning picture, 
with 86% of projects operating under a subcontracting system that often prioritizes profit maximization over quality. With layers of subcontractors and administrative fees, little remains for actual construction, leading to compromised safety standards and what's colloquially termed tofu drag projects. China's rapid growth drive during the reform and opening up period further exacerbated the issue, with expedited projects often prioritizing low-cost short-term solutions. Despite widespread malpractice, observers note a lack of repercussions, meaning there was implicit support from Chinese Communist Party officials. This troubling phenomenon reflects deeper systemic issues, driven by the tragedy of the commons inherent in China's communist system. Roughly speaking, in a system where individuals possess only usufruct rights and not ownership rights, buildings are considered public property rather than individual property. This perception fosters a culture in which stakeholders in public construction projects see opportunities for personal gain, potentially leading contractors to prioritize cost-cutting measures over quality, such as using poor quality materials or lowering technical standards. Not only are there inherent risks to quality, a lack of accountability in public construction exacerbates the prevalence of tofu dreg projects. Accountability challenges in public construction mainly stem from administrative corruption among local CCP officials. For them, their performance is largely reflected in economic data, so they try to boost local GDP through as much construction as possible. Projects with large investments and short construction periods become convenient means for local officials to achieve political achievements. Even if accidents occur after those projects are completed, the officials who approved the projects may have been promoted to higher positions or still hold positions in local government, making it a challenge to hold them accountable. In fact, the tofu drag projects are not only popular domestically, but also spread worldwide through the CCP's Belt and Road Initiative. Over the past decade, the CCP government has provided $1 trillion in loans to Belt and Road countries, with the aim of developing economic trade and expanding China's influence in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. However, in recent years, there have been increasing reports that many large-scale infrastructure projects under the Belt and Road Initiative also have poor construction quality. This has crippled essential infrastructure, forcing these countries to incur additional costs to address the problems in the coming years. Surely these Belt and Road countries are starting to ask who benefits more from this friendship. The incidents with underwater tunnels, or in general, projects constructed by China, have highlighted the urgent need to improve oversight, accountability, and compliance with quality standards in construction projects. As the Belt and Road Initiative expands these concerns globally, it prompts a critical examination of the true costs and benefits of China's ambitious infrastructure. So what do you think? What future will come for Chinese constructions? Please comment below your opinion and don't forget, give this video a like if you find it interesting. See you in the next videos.